Welcome to an ABUS combination padlock patient. <laughs> this combination padlock was sent to me by William Mangsell and I think it has a problem. When I received it, it didn't come with a combination, so I thought I would shim it open and look inside and um, see which numbers um, align all the gates uh, on the three discs. So what I did is I put a shim in there and opened it up. Yeah, I think I could have um, left out the shim because if you pull uh, hard enough on this lock, um, if you pull hard enough on this lock, it will just open. Um, but I think it's it's somehow broken. So when you turn it like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have seen when you when you turn it like like this um, counterclockwise, and the third wheel begins to turn, it it turns really hard, um, but at the same time it puts pressure on the shackle, and it comes out. Do this again, and if you turn it the other way around, so you have to turn it a few times until the third wheel turns along, then it should retract the shackle. So I think this is uh, not a normal behavior for a um, combination padlock. And when you uh, look inside, you can see this, this locking pole here, this, this lever. And I think this should be uh, spring-loaded and actually uh, pushed uh, in this direction to um, engage with a cutout on the shackle to um, hold it in place. So you can you can turn the wheels so you can see hopefully okay so here you can see all the three discs that's the first disc that is connected with a dial if you turn it um, a full revolution it takes along the second and another full revolution later here's one gate by the way um, the third wheel starts turning and let's see where the gate is Yeah, here is the gate of the third wheel. Yeah, yeah, that's the um, look inside. Um, would be pretty easy to find out the, the right combination for this lock, but as I said, um, uh, it doesn't want to close. So no matter what you do, if you hold the shackle, if you turn the dial, it just doesn't want to close. And I think that the spring here on this lever is broken. You can take a pick. and pull on on this guy here and you can see that would be the, the normal position for it um, in the closed state but you can no matter what you do with the dial you can just uh, push it in very easily so I think that there is something broken inside and yeah that's the reason why I'm going downstairs now and try to get this uh, cover plate off and then we'll have a look inside all right, it's done. So that was pretty easy. I just bent this uh, sheet metal here around the circumference and then this back plate came off. That thing here that looked like a rivet, it's actually, well, nothing. It's <laughs> only there for cosmetic reasons. Um, yeah, and then I pried out this piece here. It contains two of the three discs. That's the second disc and now the third disc turns. I hold this here still and then you can see it turns the third disc and I turn it around and now it turns the third disc. This, this last thing here uh, with this arm, um, um, uh, that's used for shuffling the, the discs when, when uh, the shackle is closed. We can see here the first disc, I don't think it's, maybe it's the first or the last disc, I don't know. So it's the disc that is connected to the uh, outer dial. I think you all know how this works. I've covered this in, yeah, I think, more than one video. Here is this little um, bump here that 
interacts with this here and when you turn it a full revolution um, yeah it connects with it and then it turns along the next wheel and um, between these two are the same type of connection and then it turns along the last wheel so that's the way you change the positions of the wheels and these wheels have gates and if all gates are aligned properly then uh, this piece here can um, be pushed in by pulling on the shackle so that's the usual way this this works you you pull on the shackle um, this piece here gets pushed down against the, the spring tension here um, and then it makes free the room for the shackle to uh, come out so why does this not work anymore um, frankly I have no idea what is very strange is uh, a lot of red powder or red I don't know red little little red pieces here all the way around um, I will now try to um, pull all the parts out of this lock and see if we can understand why it doesn't work anymore. So first I pull out this little spring here. Then we have the shackle that is not coming out because of this end piece here. When you pull out this end piece then the shackle should come out and that's what um, this arm here or that arm interacts with this arm when you pull out the shackle and then it shuffles the wheel so that you don't need to uh, change the dial or um, operate the dial to um, uh, lock it back up. So now the shackle should come out, all right, and we are left with uh, not much actually. There is only this block here. Try to get this out. Okay, more of this red stuff. Maybe this, ha this has something to do with the mail function. Um, yeah, that's the that's the piece that should normally uh, come out and lock up the. Sha Oops, lock up the shackle. Yeah, that's the normal um, position when it's uh, locked up. So maybe, uh, um, yeah, so we, we can see a little bit of wear. Um, I think when uh, this lock was brand new, it's um, uh, kind of, it's flat. Not, and this this um, is um, a sign of, of wear, but I don't think that this is really the cause of the trouble. So how does this work? I have no idea. A lot of red stuff here. Oh, no, no that's just my finger. <laughs> um, yeah, this. Maybe there was something inside, something red. Um, yeah, there is a. There is something that is bent here. Something that has the function of a spring, maybe it was kind of a rubber or so, something elastic, which has uh, degraded over time and is now, well, <laughs> not present anymore. And that's the reason why this piece here does not um, do its job anymore. Maybe I can find something. Um, to um, simulate this presumably um, elastic piece here and maybe I can demonstrate how this lock um, should have worked. Um, I don't know, so let's find out. So I used a elastic band and um, cut three pieces off and put it in this gap here. Now I can add this piece here to the whole block and then put it back together. Oh. 
Oops. All right. The spring is missing. And now the shackle. Ah, I think it works. Okay, you can see now the the locking piece here uh, sticks out and when I now push in the shackle, the whole block turns and it's locked up. The elastic band, the three layers of elastic band now push out this um, locking piece here and now when the dial is um, not at the right place where the cutout is, so this piece here cannot go in, it's blocked by the wheel, then the shackle will not come out anymore. Now when you dial in the right code and all the gates are aligned, like so, um, you pull in the shackle, the whole block here turns against the spring tension and you can open up the lock. To close the lock, um, you push in the shackle and you can see this locking bar here gets pushed against the, um, against the rubber band here. And you can close it and it's locked up again. Very, very cool. So let me completely reassemble this lock and I will show you the lock back in working order. All right, so I figured out what the actual code is by adding and subtracting the offset from what I see here to the actual position of the, uh, of the lever. And the code is 27, 2 and 12. So currently the wheel is shuffled and the lock is really locked up. So I have to turn the dial a couple of times until the last disc turns until 27, 27, then to 2, but passing 2 once so that the second wheel starts turning and here we go, it's 2, and then back to 12 and the lock should open. Yeah, it does. <laughs> All right, so lock is back in working order. I just need to attach the back plate and then we are good to go and we have a working lock repaired. <laughs> All right, William Mansell, thank you very much for this interesting uh, lock and uh, my the opportunity so that I can uh, play with it and uh, repair it. And everybody else, thank you very much for watching. Happy picking and bye-bye.